And although he does not like to be called an enlightened man or a guru, people flock from all walks of life to listen to him. Let's share his thoughts this morning. Hello there, and welcome to, if I might uh, parody the title of a well-known book by now, a disquieting conversation with UG, UG Krishnamurti, who is already making waves in the uh, in, the, in the sphere of philosophy, for want of a better word. I'm very careful with the words I choose when I'm talking to UG because one of the problems, uh, as I understand from the little I've read and seen and heard of you, is that uh, we have to unlearn a lot that we have learned over years, over generations of history. Uh, is that a priority in your, in your opinion for the present uh, mankind? <laughs> I really don't know uh, where to begin or where to end, but I know where to end. Right. Uh, may I be a bit frivolous and start this conversation, or whatever you want to call it, with a story. Mm -hmm. That would be most appropriate for the breakfast show, or whatever you want to call it. I am not good at narrating stories, but I will try. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, long, long time ago... That's how all stories begin. <laughs> that's how all stories yeah. begin. There lived a very great painter known for his extraordinary genius in painting things. The king of that particular kingdom where he lived invited him one day and asked him to paint uh, the picture of Israelites crossing the Red Sea and the destruction of Egyptian pursuers. Right. That fellow happened to be a sort of a lazy lout. He never did what he promised to do. It went on and on and on. Finally, the king asked him to present himself with a painting. Mm -hmm. When he found that further excuses were of no avail, the king was taken to a carefully shrouded canvas mm -hmm. and unrolled it. Mm -hmm. There was nothing but a splash of red paint on it. Oh. The king was furious and asked him, mm -hmm. what is this all about? Mm -hmm. He said, sir, it is very simple. Mm -hmm. The Israelites have across the sea. Right. What the Dickens has happened to the Egyptian pursuers mm -hmm. drowned with the answer. Right. So mm -hmm. I have a great <laughs> feeling mm -hmm. to follow that example mm -hmm. and say nothing and work out. Right. Uh, but uh, there is such a thing as uh, elementary manners <laughs> and <laughs> common decency. <laughs> and we find ourselves here to discuss uh, what I really don't know. Right. And uh, I always repeat this uh, at the risk of uh, finding myself very repetitive. Mm -hmm. I really don't know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm here like a puppet. Right. And it's up to you to pull the strings and okay. bring out whatever you think you right. can bring out of this puppet. Right. Let me try. That's uh, right. quite a formidable task, but let me try. Uh, if, if, would it be right to say that uh, your position on uh, your, your observation and your message, if I might call it that, is that one has to react to situations. One doesn't really create situations. Uh, may I uh, uh, say a few things before we yeah. go into that yeah. subject? Yeah. I'm not here, crusader with any cause. Mm -hmm. I have been blamed very often that uh, I am debunking everything mm -hmm. from disease to divinity. Mm -hmm. And I'm not propagating anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just an ordinary man yeah. in whom something extraordinary happened. Mm -hmm. As a little boy, I got interested in one very important thing. I found that whatever I wanted was what they wanted me to want. Whatever I thought about was what they wanted me to think about. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that I want what they do not want me to want? Or is there anything that I want to think which they want me to mm -hmm. think. This intrigued me for years and years and years. I wanted to find an answer for myself and by myself. I must admit that without hesitation I have learned nothing right. from either the spiritual teachers or right. the secular teachers, right. except the basic things that we need to learn to function. Right. Sanely and intelligent in this world. Right. 
Although I question the reality of this world, the reality of our existence, mm -hmm. I do have to accept the reality that is imposed on us mm -hmm. as functional. Otherwise, we cannot function sanely and intelligently. Right. But I wanted an answer for this question of mine. Right. Is there anything I want other than what they wanted me to want? Mm -hmm. Even this want is part of that wanting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I make myself clear. Uh, yes. I but I, I'm, I'm, I have a problem there. Uh, when you say that there is nothing you have possibly learned from an antecedent uh, teachers or messengers or whatever, uh, is, isn't that again a subjective statement? Uh, because yeah. unconscious to oneself, I'm afraid isn't man a product, isn't man determined by history, by technology, by uh, true, environment? True, true, but there is nothing that you can do to free yourself through any volition or effort of yours. Uh -huh. Somewhere along the line, when I found that I had no way of finding any answers for my questions, mm -hmm. nobody helped me. Yeah. In that situation, something hit me. All your life you have been searching for answers. Mm -hmm. And all the questions which I ever posed myself and threw at others mm -hmm. are born out of the answers that I already had. So the problem is to free myself from the answers. Mm -hmm. Because these questions are born out of the answers uh, yeah. there, yeah. and I didn't have the courage, I didn't have the guts to brush aside right. all the answers that yeah. these great teachers yeah. provided me with. Right. But yet, that was absolutely necessary. There was nothing that I could do about it. One day, out of nowhere as it were, mm -hmm. something hit me like the shaft of a lightning, mm -hmm. or if I may use something like is the enough to pray. Mm -hmm which shattered everything built for centuries. Mm -hmm. And I would say that freed me, I don't like the word free, right, right. from everything that every man thought, felt, and experienced before me. Uh, what I was left with was something I really do not know. Mm -hmm. And what is there is the expression of life, which right. is expressing itself mm -hmm. in an extraordinary way, using very simple uh, things like thought for functional purposes, and not using that to, to achieve mm -hmm. any goals, spiritual or otherwise, however extraordinary they may be. Right. So what I am trying to put across to those who care to listen to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. I have no illusions that they are interested in what I am going yeah. to say or yeah. what I have been saying. But they are interested, that's why you are here. <laughs> um, maybe let's just see what this, <laughs> how the viewers will react. Yeah. And it is not a logically a certain premise. Mm -hmm. It is not born out of thinking. So what is coming out of this individual seems to be very mystifying and right. uh, intriguing. But you are the one that is bringing out whatever yeah. I yeah. want to say. Yeah. But, but I have said a lot even without you were throwing questions. No, you me. have. I think the, the yes. Uh, I think the parameters are becoming very clear. Yes. The when you say what seems to me that one you have uh, per force or by uh, by a sheer spontaneity of. Uh, event had to start out on a clean slate, as it were, you know, yes. with uh, uh, with nothing of the past or nothing of the future holding you down. Uh, aren't you? But in a world where uh, where tradition, where accumulated knowledge accounts for something, for our accumulative knowledge, our experience uh, of uh, the known and the unknown, or you yeah, know, attempted the unknown. Uh, that is really the stranglehold which the culture has put in there, right? And. It is that that has created the problem for us. Mm -hmm. So the demand to free ourselves from that stranglehold of thought, yeah. centuries of accumulated experience, mm -hmm. cannot be done through any volition of your own or through any effort of your own. Mm -hmm. But how this happened to a particular individual is anybody's guess. Not that I was uh, preparing myself for yeah. this kind of a thing. What I wanted was totally yeah. different. Yeah. I wanted to be an enlightened man. Yeah. I wanted to live in peace, bliss, right. the attitude and all that kind of a thing. What is there its place is something which cannot be captured, contained right. and given expression right. to. Right. It cannot be shared with anybody because it is not in the area of an experience. Mm -hmm. And what actually happened to me was the very demand to be free from anything isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. So I have no way of telling myself that I'm a free man, that I'm an enlightened man, that I'm this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And I 
don't see any need even to tell the world yes. that there is some way you can function in this world because it is something that cannot be shared with anybody. You may very well ask me the question, why the hell? I'm sorry, it is the word hell, it's all right. Do I even try to give expression to this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the impetus even to share this with anybody is missing. Mm -hmm. And yet, if anybody who is interested in uh, listening to what I have said, yeah. And nobody is uh, asked to come, and nobody is asked to go. But if a situation arises where there is uh, something that we can do yeah. to put across what this is all about and make him see the absurdity of what the whole culture has done to us. Right. It is not that you will become an anti-culturist, if I may use that word, or that you destroy everything that has been created. Mm -hmm that you don't go around tearing down you see, the religious scriptures or all the other scriptures, mm -hmm. but the situation you find in yourself is something that anything of the past, however extraordinary it may be, yeah. cannot touch and contaminate it anymore. Yeah. So whatever is there is able to express itself in its own way. Yeah. I have said my piece. Yes, now, but isn't there a problem in this? At one level, yes, this is, uh, this is uh, to me, when I use this term, of course, eminently anti-status quoist, all that, or anti-normative, if you like, you know, uh, what we understand to be uh, the, 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 the extant culture, or extant norm, and so on. But at the other level, I have a problem with this, because this is precisely the kind of argument that can be used to reinforce status quo, to say that if 40% uh, of our population is below the poverty line, it is because it is... It is because you know, of <laughs> what we have believed for centuries, that uh, why is it not possible with all the high tech and technology that we have at our disposal to solve this basic human problem? I'm only asking a question, yes, yes. but you may very well ask me the question, what is your answer? Mm -hmm. Those who are put in uh, the place where they have to deal this, with this problem, yeah. which is a very important problem, if they don't do, it is for them to tell them you have got to do it. Yeah. So what I am trying to emphasize is that it is that that has created the problem for us. And we all find ourselves in a neurotic situation because it is the very same thing that has created you and me mm -hmm. for the sole main purpose of maintaining its continuity, its own status quo. Mm -hmm has also given us the idea that we should be free, that we should be yeah. individual. Yeah. So what I am trying to say is that there is no freedom of action there because we have to function within that framework. Mm -hmm. But why we are in conflict with mm -hmm. that framework, why we are in conflict with that status quo, yeah. why we are trying to change it into a better and a happier place, this world cannot be anything other than what it is. I think why? Because in our context, because we are living in an unequal world. I mean, wouldn't that be one of the primary reasons that we are but living in a... But there is a way and there is something that we can do to solve that problem. If we have not solved, mm -hmm. we are answerable to that thing. Yes. To whom? You may very well ask me yes. the question. Yes. So what is responsible for that is that we have introduced an element of doing something for those people and we have taken away everything that belongs to everybody yeah. and we have invented the thing called kindness, you see. Mm -hmm. Those kindly deeds have done the most harshest and unkindly yes. deeds yes. in the history of yeah. mankind. Yeah. It was almost a gospel truth for me when I repeated that loving action will inevitably lead you to the temple of divine wisdom. Mm -hmm. I was brought up on that principle. principle. Yeah. And in the name of love, mm -hmm. we have destroyed hundreds and thousands of people. Oh, yes. yeah. And so that cannot be the answer for these problems. Yeah. And we have to keep asking questions, and all of our questions spring from the answers we already have. I'm doing all the talking. No, this but, is supposed to be an interview. Yes. No, but isn't is a retreat from uh, from from action? Is a retreat from the loving principle, if you like to call it that, or from the humanitarian principle, or from uh, trying to create a egalitarian society? The answer 
No, that is not the answer. What I am trying to say is why you are in conflict with the society in which we are functioning. Yeah. I am not in conflict yeah. with that society yeah. because that is all that is there. Yeah. And anything you want to do to yeah. change it into yeah. a better world, yeah. a happier world, yeah. is the one that is responsible for the tragedy of mankind. If humanity has to save itself from the chaos of its own making, right. Right. what is necessary is that it should save itself and free itself from the saviors of mankind. So anything anybody suggests yes. adds to the list of these saviors of mankind. Yes. Yes. It is not actually solving the problem. What I am emphasizing is that uh, individually there isn't a thing that we can do. It doesn't quite. mean that we accept the defeat and quite. sit quiet quite. and retire into a jungle and yes. do what? Yes. I don't know. Yes. This is the world, this is the only reality, mm -hmm. and I have to function in this world. Yeah. And deal with this world exactly the way it is, and not superimpose on that the idea of a heaven, okay. the idea of a utopia, and all that. Yeah. No, I have no brief for uh, you know uh, religious, spiritual leaders, or ideas of heaven or hell, and so on. But I have a problem with our existence, you know. I mean, I'm sure all of us have a problem with our existence. When you step out of the studio, you're, you're, you're facing that problem. Right? Exactly. Even if you get into a car or you have to walk and cross the road, you're facing yes. that problem. Yes. Now, in such a context, uh, what, what, is the, uh, what is the essence of this, philo this, this philosophy that you're yes. advocating? Is it quietism? No. Is it existentialism? No. Uh, is it nihilism? No. <laughs> then what is it? <laughs> what it is, is very difficult to say. Why of the human existence has become hopeless? I am not using that term in any existentialist sense. Right. It is because we have been made to believe that there is an answer for our problems. What basically is the quest of human being in this world, whether he is a Russian yeah. or an American yeah. or an African or an Indian, yeah. the basic demand, the basic quest is for the significance, quest for happiness, quest for permanent pleasure. But the basic quest, I can say, is, is for a square meal a day in the Indian context. There is no excuse for us to allow that kind of a thing. Absolutely, I agree exist. with you. And what is the answer? And therefore, shouldn't so what anything I'm we say be... Is, what I'm be, suggesting yes. is that all the political systems that we have today, they are the warty outgrowths of the same religious thinking of men. Right, okay. No, I'm not against religion. Please don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. And so the political systems have entrenched themselves yeah. and that there is nothing that we can do. I yeah. see the, the future of mankind, the future of the world yeah. rests in the hands of the leaders of mankind today. No longer in the church, no longer in the, the religious thinking of man. They are most anxious to see that these political systems fail right. and ready to jump in, step in mm -hmm. and exploit the situation. Sure, sure. So, we have put them all in the seat of power. Mm -hmm. They are not only there in the seat of power, they share power with others. Right. And we have entrusted them with most powerful weapons. Yeah. And what is it that they will not do yeah. to put themselves there where they are forever? Yeah. And if that is questioned, if that is challenged, yeah. what they will do is anybody. Yeah. So, uh, well, while uh, one agrees that I think one agrees with your basic premise that there is no excuse for allowing the kinds of things that are going on to continue. Uh, but at the same time, we do not propose an alternative scheme of things. Uh, so I'm sure there are problems, there are distortions in the way mankind goes about its business. Uh, but uh, is the answer again a stepping back? Is it, uh, shouldn't there be a more dynamic principle to tackle this? But uh, what, is it more that you are, that, what is it that you are talking about? Individually, there isn't a thing that you can do. I am not advocating uh, uh, any uh, revolutionary right. action because right. a revolution is nothing but a revaluation of our value system. They create another value system, although they have solved this problem in communist countries with clothing and shelter. The basic needs are taken care of, but the whole system as a system is failing. For whatever reason, we don't want to go into that. So the revolution is not the answer for that. One and the only revolution is not the answer for it. But individually we have to ask... It can be a step perhaps, a revolution can be a step in the right direction. But that demands another revolution. Right. Yeah? So when once the revolution fails, there is a tendency to look back. You know? 
that is what we do. See, anybody who looks back for the answer yeah. for the situation in which we find ourselves, whether it is in the field of politics or in the field of science or in the field of psychology, yeah. you have no future to offer to such people. Right. So looking back is not the answer. Revive. There is a tendency there in the United States back to Jesus, mm -hmm. back to the great heritage of India. And when these people throw those things at me, the great heritage of India, mm -hmm. we are no all problem. the products of that great yeah. heritage of India. If this is what the great heritage of India yeah. has in produced, India. Yes. Huh? Yes. they are not going to listen what? to us. What? You know, the spiritual what? greatness, the spiritual land and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Makes no sense if you can't yes. close 40, I mean, exactly. give two square meters to 40% of the yes, population. For 40, I'm not yes. questioning the, the leaders of our country, yes. 43 years of freedom. We cannot blame British for the conditions. Right. But you see, the, the, they always throw this question, of what is it that you are doing? Yes. You know, they want alternatives. They want, uh, this is too negative, what yes. you are saying. Mm -hmm. And as I see it, I can assert an opinion. It's whatever is created has to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, uh, this self-consciousness occurred in the human species. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm trying to emphasize yeah. always. And that separated the human species from the rest of yeah. the species on this planet. Right. And that is the beginning of you see, what you call the, the isolated existence of this man. Right. And that is where the whole demand that he is something different from the rest of the species, and that the whole thing is created for the benefit of mankind. Anything that is born out of thought, mm -hmm. thought is all that we have. Yeah. We don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. But we are not ready to accept the fact that that can create problems and cannot solve the problems mm -hmm. is something which we are not ready to accept. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yuji. I, 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 I suppose this is only a slice of, again, in, this, in the same uh, simile of, 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 of an entire continuum. Uh, we can only probably look at a, a slice here in this uh, a short while given to us on television. But thank you so much for being with us on behalf of our viewers. Thank you for having me on this show. Thank you. Bye-bye. 20 minutes.